this mini lecture is going to look at the concept of center of mass. All right, so we're going to look at really what do we mean by center of mass? What is it? How do we calculate it? Why do we even care? And determining um, our ideas about torque, at least in this first introduction. We're actually going to look at center of mass a number of times, um, but we're just going to look at a very conceptual base for this particular mini lecture. So in general, the center of mass is simply defined as the average location of all the mass in an object. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I were to look at an object, let's say this brick, and I wanted to know on average where is the mass located in that object, well, I'd have to do a number of things. I'd have to define a reference point. And that doesn't sound too surprising, right? So we define reference points all the time in physics. And then I'd have to say, all right, I'm going to take a tiny little piece of mass, whatever that is, and look at how far away it is from the reference point. And I'm going to take another tiny little piece of mass, wherever it is in the object, and how far away from the reference point. And I do that for every single object, every little tiny piece of mass in the object, and I take the average. That, in a nutshell, is the average location of all the mass. Now. For this mini lecture, we're not going to actually do any calculations. So this is more geared at that conceptual based level. For those of you who might be in a algebra based or calc based class, well, you might be able to um, be tasked with calculating that actual average location of the mass of objects. But for now, just in principle. So how does that look? And we probably have really good intuitions about that specifically already. Let's imagine that I have a rod. So here's a nice rod. I'm going to draw that rod on our board. Now, if this rod is uniformly distributed, what do I mean that by that? A uniformly distributed object means that if I take a small little piece of mass anywhere at all along this object, that same size mass that same physical shape of mass will have the same mass as any other identical shaped tiny little piece anywhere else in the object. So that no matter what chunk I take, it ha as long as I keep the size, the same volume, it has the same mass. That's what we mean by uniformly distributed. So this red cylindrical bar is indeed uniformly distributed. So if I look at the average location of the mass this spot, or sorry, the location of the mass at this spot, and I look at the same location of, or the same mass at a location over here, on average, the mass is, well, it's in the center. So for a uniformly distributed object, the center of mass is in the geometric center, meaning whatever the geometric center of that object is, that is the location of the center of mass. So for this rod, the geometric center is right smack dab in the middle. Geometrically, if I took the shape and looked at the center of that shape. And for you, if it's uniformly distributed, the center of mass is in the geometric center. So what happens if I add some mass to one side of that object? So if I take a square and I put it on to one side of that object, well, what happens to the location of the mass? Well, I have more mass on this side. So on average, there's more mass on the right side, of this side of the object, than there is on this side of the object. So my center of mass is going to shift to the right. On average, I've put more mass over here. So on average, the center of mass, the average location of the mass, had to move to where there's more mass. The more mass I have, well, then it's contributing that location more to the center of mass. All right, so that's sort of the basic idea behind the center of mass, simply the average location of where that mass is. Now, why do we need to worry about the center of mass as we start to explore our analysis of torque? And what I want to introduce you to in this idea, this initial conceptual idea, has to do with the force of gravity. So let's go back to my single rod. If I consider how the force of gravity is acting on this rod, well remember the earth exerts a force on every little piece of mass that exists in the world. 
And so this little piece of mass on this side of the rod, well, it's experiencing a force due to gravity, and it's related to that little piece of mass times, of course, the acceleration due to gravity. And the little piece of mass on this side of the rod, well, it too is experiencing the force of gravity. And those two arrows are the same length. Why? Well, I said it was uniformly distributed, and therefore the masses are the same for those two tiny little pieces, and well, therefore the force of gravity must be the same, since the force of gravity is mass times g. And no matter really where I look in this rod, well, every little piece of mass has the same force of gravity acting on it, as long as I keep that little piece of mass the same. Well, if I were to let go of this rod, we see that it falls straight down. Why does it do that? Well, we know about free fall. We've done a force analysis with things in, in free fall, with things being affected by gravity. Gravity is pulling that object down. It's pulling every one of these little pieces down. So it's as if I've taken this object, since it didn't rotate, it just fell straight down, and I squished this object to one location, the center of mass. I take all these little pieces and I squish them in. And, well, here's the force of gravity acting on the whole object. All these little arrows adding up, acting at that center of mass. Well, that kind of looks like the free body diagrams we used to draw when we did force analysis. And that's what we were doing, actually. We were looking at the forces acting on an object as if that object had no dimension and was just a single dot, single collection of mass at the object's center of mass. And gravity's going to act the same if I model this rod as a single dot squished all together at the center of mass, or if it's elongated, uniformly distributed, and falls according to the law of gravity. Okay, so what does this provide for us? Well, you might recall when we did the first um, discussion of torque, remember that torque had to do with not only a force being exerted, but a force at a radius. So we had to know not only what the force was, but where that force was acting. Well, gravity can certainly exert a torque. It is indeed a force, and it can cause a rotation. And so how do we know where to put the force of gravity acting on an object when it actually acts along the entire length of that object? That's where center of mass comes into play in our analysis. The force of gravity is modeled to act at the object's center of mass. And so when we do a torque analysis, when we look at the torque due to the force of gravity, we're going to place that force of gravity at the object's center of mass. Now when we talk about balance and stability, we'll come back to this idea. And when we talk about rotation, we'll come back to this idea. But for now, I want you to understand the idea of center of mass is simply the average location. And that for a uniformly distributed object, that average location is in the geometric center. That's just going to make our life a little easier. We can use that idea. Most importantly for our torque analysis right now, that the force of gravity acts at the object's center of mass. All right, so when doing our torque analysis, and you have an object that's uniformly distributed, you can place the object's force of gravity at the center of mass. It can be modeled that way. If an object is not uniformly distributed, you will either be told exactly where that object's center of mass is, especially if you're in a conceptual base, my, my conceptual base course, or you'll be required to calculate that center of mass to know where the object's uh, center of mass is located and then to know where that force of gravity is. All right, so we'll use this idea in our torque analysis, and then we'll come back to it when we talk more about rotation. Good job.